hello and welcome. Or in Italian, ciao, signore e signori, ragazzi e ragazze. The Sistine Chapel, welcome to Sandro's Corner and the other side of art history. Today we're gonna talk about um, the Sistine Chapel, part one, or as it was originally known and still known in some other countries as the Sixteen Chapel. Pope Sixtus IV, wrong Pope. Pope Sixtus IV, he made major restorations to the Cappella Magna between 1477 and 1480, so the name stuck. The Sixteen Chapel with an X. Here, obviously, it's anglicized, and uh, we call it the Sistine Chapel with an S. And so other countries do the same. So in a sense, Justin Bieber, he was right uh, during his interview uh, with David Letterman, and he was made fun of. He just thought, didn't know it. Because more and more you see like the, the mural and the, like the Sistine Chapel on a, you know, it's, just, it's too much. I'm not going for the Sistine Chapel. Look. So, but it is a uh, common thing that people uh, know little about this sacred place. They, they know some, you know, the, uh, the fresco, the ceiling, the fingers touching. But there are plenty of misconceptions uh, that surround this great work of humanity. This is a gift from one of the greatest maestros of all time, Michelangelo Buonarroti. The size of the chapel, I mean, it's not huge, but it's about, you know, the, the size of a, you know, regulation basketball court, four walls. But uh, a lot of people will not know that uh, it is not only Michelangelo I mean, his art that it's in the chapel. Uh, there are four walls with different topics. The southern wall is decorated with the stories of Moses, and those were painted between 1481, 1482, and these artworks are by none other uh, than Renaissance giants like Sandro Botticelli, Pietro Perugino, Domenico Girlandaio, and Piero di Cosimo. Just the artworks by Sandro Botticelli are great treasures by themselves here on the southern wall. The trials of Moses and the punishment of the rebels. The northern wall was also decorated by these uh, masters, but with stories of Jesus. The baptism of Christ by Pietro Perugino and the temptation of Christ by Sandro Botticelli. You know, these are frescoes that will blow your mind. You know, these alone are worth the price of the ticket that you, uh, that you pay at the Vatican Museum. The Last Judgment. The Last Judgment was uh, a work of art that was commissioned by Giulio di Giuliano de' Medici, of course, of the Medici family, also known as Pope Clement VII in uh, the, the 1530s, and it was to decorate the altar section of the chapel. But the work involved erasing first an altarpiece uh, of the Assumption of Mary by Pietro Perugino. So, you know, Pietro Perugino, if he was alive, probably he was pissed. Um, and this work was the last fresco to be painted and, uh, uh, and not only removed you know, the great work by Perugino, but also a portion uh, of the ceiling fresco by Michelangelo himself. So there are a few things to note about the, uh, the Last Judgment. Number one, Michelangelo was already in his 50s when he started the work, uh, this, this great, great work of art, and it took him more than five years to get it done. And, and you can sense, you can, you can see the, the darker and somber mood 
that uh, the reflects the evolution of the master. But what you know, what do we expect? You know, the uh, the title alone, the Last Judgment, uh, is warning humanity about what's to come if you don't play nice. Eternal damnation. Number two. The center of the fresco, of course, is Jesus Christ. What is interesting is that he is not depicted as it was the custom, uh, or what is the custom today. Um, not what the uh, not not the Christ that the Romans knew, or that we know today. He lost the beard, uh, and and looks more like a Greek god. Uh, in the tradition of Hercules, Apollo, and Jupiter. But most likely, and in particular, is that Jesus is believed to be modeled uh, from Belvedere Apollo. Uh, this is a, a marble structure uh, from classical antiquity, uh, which was brought uh, to the Vatican by Pope Julius II. Pay attention to his pose. Turning to his left, with his left hand, he offers salvation. With his raised right hand, eternal damnation. Three, the battle for the souls is fierce. Angels and demons work overtime to bring the poor people to their camps. And the details are terrifying. The demons, frightening. And number four, the maestro inserts himself in the picture, or so they say, but kind of uh, in a weird uh, fashion. Many agree that Michelangelo is depicting himself, um, his own face, in the flayed skin of St. Bartholomew. You know, it's... it's, it's Kind of gross. One of the uh, Michelangelo's poems refers to the metaphor of a snake shedding its own skin. Maybe he's doing this himself in hope for a new life after death.